Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope you are all enjoying this conference as much as I am. I've spoken to uh, a number of customers. Uh, some of the words that I've heard uh, our customers say is, this feels like a revolution that's taking place in the recruitment industry right now. And I think that's really apt uh, for our, our next speaker. But before I go there, uh, I want to share with you something that we believe very strongly in, at LinkedIn, which is the power of threes. Uh, an example of this is uh, the three product introductions that we made earlier today. Uh, another example is, is something that our uh, VP of Talent Solutions, Dan Shapiro, likes to talk about, which is remember and think about the three things that you'd like to take away from this conference, because there's an awful lot of material here and far too much for any one person to absorb. Uh, if you can't come up with three things, uh, come talk to me after the conference and I can help fill in the blanks on things that I've learned and that I'm excited about. Um, I was talking to uh, the Queen of England a little while ago and uh, we had a conversation about this concept, the power of threes. And she said to me, David, I'm, I'm having a struggle right now. I'm hoping that you can help me. Um, we, we started off the summer with my Diamond Jubilee. It's a great event. We went on over the summer to have the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Uh, those were fantastically well received. But we're really struggling for a third event to kind of cap off the season. And I said, um, Queen, I think you address her as Queen. Uh, Your Highness, maybe, is probably a better address. <laughs> I'm obviously not from around here. Uh, I think we can help. Why don't we assemble the most proactive, thoughtful group of talent acquisition professionals and put together the largest talent acquisition conference in Europe? And she agreed, said that was a great idea. David, please go on with it. And so you are the culmination of the British summer. So thank you. Uh, let me introduce our next speaker. Uh, I am thrilled to uh, introduce Matthew Jeffrey. Just over a year ago, Matthew Jeffrey published back-to-back -back articles on the future of recruitment, uh, aptly titled Recruitment 3.0 and Recruitment 4.0. In one of the most widely read and commented upon publications in recent ERE history, uh, released just over a week ago, Matthew put together and published the third and final installment in the trilogy, uh, oddly enough titled Recruitment 5.0, giving its readers a thorough sense for where the industry is headed and offering a unique perspective on how employers can prepare for the changes in the revolution. Matthew is the head of EMEA Talent Acquisition and Global Talent Brand at Autodesk. Prior to this role, he was the Director of Talent Brand for Electronic Arts. He's been voted the UK Recruitment Personality of the Year in the Recruitment Awards. According to Matthew, this will be his last public presentation for the foreseeable future, as he has some big plans to go back to the writing table to release even more cutting-edge material. Something tells me, specifically Matthew, that he is going to also attend a couple of Man U matches and maybe catch a Formula One race in his spare time now that he's taken a hiatus from the lecture circuit. Please welcome and join me in welcoming one of my favorite presenters and futurists, in talent acquisition, Matthew Jeffrey. Good afternoon, London. How are we doing? Are you feeling good? There's a bit of energy in the room. That's a, a good thing. So have you learned a lot from the past uh, day? Yes. yes. Yes, brilliant. So let's start with a very big bold opening statement and that statement is that no company or individual in this room or out in the market has mastered the use of social media, employment branding, any of the key things that we're talking about. We don't claim to do that Autodesk. So that's a big bold statement that we really start to make that we recognise we're all learning and we're going to take those big, bold leaps out in hopefully experimenting and mastering these new areas. So why is there the need for this new recruiting? We have to appreciate the talent landscape. So key is, is that everything is evolving. Recruitment is not an easy job. 
So some of you may see this as a cheesy term, but the global war for the top talent. The top talent is the key thing. We can all hire mediocre talent. Then we have, we're competing, but really competing to hire the best. It really is that race that all of us, particularly in the technology sector, we're all fighting to get those individuals into our companies to affect the bottom line. The experienced talent pool, those individuals that can hit the ground running immediately and make a difference for our companies, that's shrinking as most of our companies are growing, particularly out in the emerging markets. Our industries are converging. What does that mean? It means previously IT sector used to just hire people in the IT sector, consumer goods focused in their area. But now we're all intermingling and fighting for that talent. A great marketing director can be in the public sector, can be in consumer goods, retail or IT, and we all want to hire those individuals. So the market is really tight and fighting out there. We also have to appreciate that company loyalty is lessening. The average individual now spends less than two years in a job. That's quite a fluid situation for the job market. Now, we look at the great in-house model. I'm not going to say anything about agencies and job boards today, but what do we bring as in-house recruiters? We can put in internal referrals. We can use the social media. We can use the ATS and CRM to really build the talent. There are so many things that we can bring but also that passion to represent our companies and to get that best talent in, hence the growth of the in-house model. We're seeing that that in-house model is having the results, getting that talent in and making a difference, and that's pretty critical for what we're looking at in the marketplace. What else are we affected by? The changing demographics. People are working longer, retiring later, hence having more people in the workforce. Our graduates... Our graduates we don't stick up for enough are going out, getting the qualifications, and then they don't get those jobs. They're effectively, a lot of them are going into becoming the Starbucks generation. They start working in the coffee house and then desperately try and find that job. And that's something we as recruiters need to be aware. There's great talent out there. And yes, there's so many solutions as we see today. What do we do? Technological solutions? Do we go for an ATS? ATS with bolt-ons? Do we have a CRM element in there? And then we have the great sort of self-proclaimed gurus out there, the consultants who try to advise us about the best way forward. Now, the interesting thing, what I love about some of the self-proclaimed gurus is that you can look at LinkedIn and look at their background, and then you can suddenly realise that some of these people who are commenting on the comfy sofa of life don't have the experience to really advise us. And that's sort of key as we look at those profiles and think, we know it. We can get out there and research it and do a lot of this ourselves. So we know that as we sit in this room today, our talent is being headhunted. There are people back at our offices mapping out competitors, calling them, trying to tempt them away. And that's adding to the dynamics of where we are in the market. What else? Our profession has been harmed by lazy recruiters who are happy just to do the minimum to get through. Post and pray, get out there and use agencies. And then link to this point, some of the lazy recruitment leaders who are out there who are happy to see this process and that continue out in the marketplace. Don't adopt and push forward a social media. Come up with excuses. Don't try to innovate in a profession where we are creative in ways that we can get that best talent. So what else is happening out there? Recruitment is not easy. We have so many dynamics, as we've just said out there. We need to change, and we need to adapt, and we need to drive forward. Now, as we look at that, as we're changing, there are different dynamics that really will affect us in that moving forward. We have to be revolutionary in many ways to get out there and make a difference and believe us. For those recruiters who are unhappy with their recruiting managers, push them. Get the new ideas in there. Let's get our profession back on track and get the sort of status that we deserve out in the marketplace and not be seen as HR's poorer cousin. So the basics, the basics haven't changed. We're always going to be out there hiring the best talent. But what do we want to do as an end goal? That end goal is about trying to build that utopia of the predictable talent pipeline. 
When a hiring manager says, I need a marketing director in Moscow, and then we've already mapped out those companies where those people could be, built relationships, and boom, we can put in those calls, and then we have that hiring list. So that's some companies a long way off, but a number of companies, as we heard, are trying to do that today. You know, it's all about fitting these pieces together to get that jigsaw together at the end of the day. So Autodesk, easy for me to stand and say this up here. What about our company? We've got all of those challenges that we just mentioned, but also we've got other challenges. Who is Autodesk? Is it a car rental company? What do you do? We haven't heard of you. All of those sorts of things, which really harms us in our attraction of talent outside of our market. But when we get out there and explain our software powers the creative geniuses behind the last 18 visual effects award winners in film, films like Avatar, Inception, Lord of the Ring, Pixar films. Then we look at video games. Around 95% of video games use our software. A lot of the bridges, the cars, the buildings around us as we walk in today have been designed with our software. So we've got an exciting story to say but people don't reconnect with our brand. So that's our big challenge of how we get out there and start to do it. And that's why we've looked at a lot of these issues. And like most companies is in this room, we have the added challenges that our business is changing. We're moving to the cloud. We're moving more to mobile in our software. We're moving more to consumer with areas like Sketchbook Pro and allowing people out there to be designers and harness their creative benefits and their creative zeal. So that's a lot. Our goal is obviously to attract the best talent, but we need to be creative in the way we do that and message out what we're trying to achieve. So let's get to this, the new recruiting. Now, I, like many of you, don't like to hang a hat on something and say 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, but just take it as the ideas. So what was 3.0 about, to use that term? Simple basics in recruiting, that not everybody's looking for a job. The employment brand is pivotal, about building communities and getting real value from those communities out in the marketplace. The social is about conversation and not about push messaging and shouting at the audience. There are so many different things in there that after the end of this, you will have access to a paper, an 88-page special paper that you can dip through and look at different sections, and uh, we'll explain how you get that afterwards. So 3.0 was about that. Is it real, is it reality, or is it unachievable? We topped that off with an article on 4.0, talking about radical things about can recruitment be a profit center? Talking about gamification, crowdsourcing, a lot of buzzwords, but a lot of things that we as recruiters can bring to the market and make a difference. So let's explore some of these ideas and see, do they work or are they just good hypothetical spin? So, standing out from the crowd, employment branding. These are pretty key, and we've heard about that brilliantly from Paul Maxim this morning and what Unilever are doing. We have to get out there and show what our company is doing and explain that. But, you know, what is an employment brand? That brand is that person's gut feel to a product, service, or organization, and that gut feel can also come in place with employment brand as well. Would I want to work for that company? Now, as we sort of come through and look at it, is that uh, employment brand is not about a message, it's not about a logo, it's not about that vision statement or something flashy, it's what your employees are saying about you in the marketplace. It's what candidates are saying. And do you know what? We can't control that. We've lost control of that. We can put out the most flashy message out there about what a great place we are to work, but if it doesn't resonate with the audience and the people out there, you're shot down. So what else are we doing? In terms of employment brand messaging and marketing, we don't really differentiate ourselves from other companies. You don't go into a supermarket and then look at a whole load of white blank packaging and then try and make a decision. That's what's happening with employment brands. What is an employment brand for a lot of companies? They say, we're unique. We're a great company. We have a fantastic culture. We work hard. We play hard. And then the poor candidate sits there and reads this on uh, corporate literature and thinks, wow, every company has the same ideas. And that's lazy marketing, but we do it. And we've been guilty of that at Autodesk as well. So what else is actually happening? It comes back to that thing is 
the people inside the business are actually the true brand ambassadors, the true champions of what's going on. And it's how we nurture them to feel good about the company, have the basics in place that they enjoy working for the company. All the standard things are there, comp and bends, HR reviews, manager reviews, etc., etc. But what else can you do? We know our employees, if they're fed up, they're going to go off and moan. And they can moan on social networks and social media, and they can leap on glass door. And effectively, that does down your employment brand as people look at these particular sites out there. So for us at Autodesk, it's about, OK, we recognize the challenges we have in recruitment. We recognize the challenges in the market. Why should people come to us? And it is about that ability to develop and that ability to fit in a culture where everybody really matters, has their say, can work in autonomy and drive things through, but also has a lot of fun in doing so. So easy things for us to do. Here's some examples. Global fitness challenge. Send out a, a pedometer and measure the steps of a number of people over the course of several months. Form global teams. And it's a great way then that leaderboards have been set up in the company of groups of individuals competing to be the fittest within Autodesk. Simple thing, but great fun. Kids at Autodesk Day. Bringing in the kids to see what their mums, their dads, and their guardians do at work. Understand what they're doing, but have fun. Get out there and have fun in terms of, you know, if you like go-karting, get groups together and, you know, race each other and have fun. That's a particular passion of mine. Uh, an event that was organised recently with Mauricio Formula One. We have a global football team, or soccer, as I understand it said in the US. And uh, we invite teams from all over Autodesk to come over to Italy and play once a year for the World Cup. What else do we do? There's a photo competition that we have annually that what does my Autodesk really represent to you? And we say to employees, send us your photos of what it means to you. And we get great content, which is far, far more interesting than the corporate stuff that we try and put together of people standing, looking cheesy, smiling at a camera in their suits. What else are we trying to do? Our CEO is very visible when we make sure that he's out and about, meeting with graduates, meeting with employees, out in the media, but also, behind the doors, he has sessions called Coffee with Carl, where he invites groups of individuals to come on telepresence and have a general discussion about the company and what we're doing and what direction. And boy, does that actually motivate the employees as they go back and report on that. And that shows accessibility of the CEO. And all of the silly stuff that most companies do, office curry notes, which I enjoy a bit too much, office drink nights, going to the cinema, all add to that sense of, yes, we're enjoying it. <laughs> we have a pets, uh, bring your pets to work. And uh, it's great fun, bring them in and uh, poor things posing in the uh, hats, but uh, you can get the gist there. All simple things that don't cost a lot of money. If you've got whiteboard space, we have a silly game that we put up in Farnborough, which goes on every day, A to Z, and we pose a question. A to Z of cartoons, characters. A to Z of heroes and villains. And as people come around and they make a cup of tea or whatever, they start scrawling on the board and putting their stuff in. But it comes a central point where people come, discuss, and really network. Again, free use. And we love our flash mobs. We do them internally and we do them externally, but I'll leave it there as some of you may know what may come. Even in the Jubilee, the Queen came to our office, which was great, and we gave her a cake. As you can see, she was, uh, she was amused. Interns, it's key for us, it's just making sure they feel they have a career, a vision, a purpose to drive forward. And particularly in a number of our offices in the US, here in EMEA, and over in Asia, it's about giving that sense of, here's where you can go, here are the tools, now go on, go and do it with our full support. And that's key for us in terms of that culture. And lastly, things like our Formula One competition for students and for internal interns, to design the next Ferrari. Partnering with Ferrari, and you can see there Luca de Montezemolo and Fernando Alonso, what, but what a great thing for students. And some of our great universities in the UK entered this. So now you're getting an idea of what we're trying to do with our culture. But employment brand and what people say comes back to the basics of communicate, communicate, communicate. 
not just about staff meetings, not just about emails, not just about the internal intranet you can see there where people can post up what they're doing and we can hear about the latest business at Autodesk. But it's also things like having Salesforce chatter, an internal Facebook where people can go on and mess around and get to know each other. And that's key for a global business as we learn about our friends and partners in China, in Singapore, or out in the USA. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And yes, we have to listen. Everybody has an employee survey, probably in this room once a year, but really listening to what's said, being humble, and when things aren't working out, addressing them. Not addressing them with HR in the back room with the CEO saying, how could we do this? But with focus groups and being open about, you've told us something, now we're learning, and we're going to go ahead and adjust it. So all of this stuff, this focus on building the employment brand by giving the employees what they want and feeling part of the culture, how do you measure that success? Yes, these surveys, but also entering into awards like Great Places to Work. Now, for us, that's a great external validation of what we're trying to do with the employment brand. You know, getting to number 17 just this year in the UK, number 6 in Switzerland, number 13 in Europe, with other awards to come. So we're pretty excited about that, and we then use that to obviously go out to our potential candidates in the marketplace and our employees. With this emphasis on what we're trying to do, boils back to humanising the brand, revealing behind the corporate iron curtain, and showing the people behind, what they do, how they got to their position, what's their experience, what drives them, what do they do to have fun in the evening, etc. All of the things that we like to know before applying for a job. And with that, we take the pictures of them. Generally, we use their own content, but again, it's just showing them in a relaxed surrounding, not in a suit and tie, looking frightened that a car's coming at them at 100 mile an hour, and we've just taken the photo. It's about getting that sense of our employees relaxed, having fun, and really making a difference. So back to that new recruiting, 3.0, one of the central tenants there was not everybody's looking. So if you think 10% of the job market is active at any one stage, on agency books, on the job boards, applying to roles on our corporate career sites, that means 90% of candidates are passive. They're sitting there, they're quite happy in their current roles. Now let's take that a little bit further. Yes, we are out there, like everybody in the room with our sources, focused on identifying, organogramming, mapping that talent, etc. Yes, we all do that, but we have to try more. How do we do that? It's about building those communities, that buzzword that everybody seems to be using. Now, how do you define a community? You know, there are certainly so many definitions flying around, and I'll certainly come to that. But again, come back to that point. The green big button you can see there is that whole passive pool. The active pool, the little blue one, is the smallest part. And you can see there the recruiters are really focused on that part and that central message. The sources and the employment branders and marketers are focused on that passive, identifying the best, messaging to them, building those relationships and a whole host of things and ideas you can look at in the paper. Now, let's come up with a, a new term, um, pactive. What does that mean? It's combining passive and active. So I see everybody in this room, if you're not looking for a job now, I would still say that you're pactive. That means that if a company came to you at the right moment, at the right time, with the right proposition, they could then take you back into the job market and you're immediately turned active. So everybody out there is a pactive candidate. We just have to turn them active by the messages and the, the way that we communicate with those individuals. So that means that out in the marketplace is that we have a mix of pactive people, pactive candidates, but at the end of the day, even those people in the communities we build, if they're not looking for a role or they're not right and they don't have the right skills, we have to look at them as employment brand ambassadors. And this boils back to candidate experience, where we as recruiters have always relied on that bounce back email, which effectively says, thank you for applying, we note your skills and experience, and if you're right for the role, we will come back to you, etc. And then generally they're left to rot and fester on the database and then become those people that go out on the blogs and criticise us. 
Quite rightly, we've all have had that experience, but as an industry, we need to start addressing it, and that's pretty key. So going back to a community, what are communities? For me, there are simply two types. The corporate manufactured community, the Autodesk community, the PepsiCo community, the Sodexo community. These are communities that we're generating to engage people, whether it's to be candidates, whether it's for marketing, whether it's for sales, whether it's for crowdsourcing of new ideas. These are ones that we've set up and we have motives behind them. The other type are the organic communities. They form around a general set of interests or values. Now, interestingly, these values and interests, you can find them on LinkedIn, in the discussion groups, Java developers, HR directors, etc., etc. all people having that common bond and sharing those ideas but are brilliant for us to actually get in there and to recruit. So how do we sort of build this corporate community? So the interesting thing is that people start to worry about it. The first key thing is that on your ATS, there could be many, many thousands of people. Those people are generally left and not communicated with. Why aren't those people in our communities, on our Facebook page, on our blog site, on our Twitter feed, etc.? They're just left. Why aren't we marketing to them to remind them, you know, there's not the right opportunity for it at the moment, but have a look at what's going on with our company and how we're developing, etc. And having those friendly messages that people say, you know, I applied to them, but they care. They're interested. And that's key, is getting that balance in communication. And you can see here some different ideas which are come into the paper you can download of what you can do to engage and build that community, whether it's using the social medias, whether it's using you know, employment brand click adverts on job boards, whether it's using the LinkedIn discussion groups. There is a whole host of ways that you can actually achieve that goal of building a community very, very quickly. In 4.0, we talked about crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing your candidates. Imagine going to a community and saying, we're looking for these individuals, and then that community comes back. How do we actually then start to engage those people? You know, like the principle of employee referrals, in-house we reward those people with money. We can't do that straight away, externally, because obviously those candidates could have been coming to us anyway. But learning from the principles of video games, do we give them badges which at the end of the day then build up to the financial rewards because if someone finds us five candidates that is worth rewarding and moving forward so when you look at crowdsourcing as i said those crowds are out there they're on linkedin now there's thousands be it the java developers to use that example of many hundreds of thousands there or the talent puddles java developers in san francisco java developers in london all in groups that we can use our sources to look at the individuals involved. We can then get in amongst those discussions, use our employees to actually actively become thought leaders and win over people in those communities and then use them, obviously, for recruiting purposes. The key thing is that some of the large corporates we see are so excited about setting up a community and setting up a Facebook page and getting, let's say, 300,000 fans on that Facebook community but the value of that community may be next to nothing. Yes, you've got the employment brand ambassador element, but if it's like 300,000 children across the world and friends who are never going to work for you, then that community is effectively worthless. So it comes back to targeting and the focus of actually building that community with the support of your sources, with the support of those different areas like the ATS, like some of the targeted communications we're talking to, if the right individuals are in that community, then the value actually has its, its inherent. So looking at recruitment communication, most of it is boring. It's that list of jobs, and particularly on the web, hyperlink back to the website. Simple thing to say, content is king. We all hear about that, but people even tweeted this morning is, well, what content is good? What do you put out there? What do you say? So for me, that content is about... OK, let's have the framework, be it the blog site, the Facebook page, and you have to focus on little rather than doing a lot. There are so many different social media channels you can get blinded. People say, go and do Pinterest or something, but if the value is not there for you, then don't do it. Just focus on doing what you can do as best you can. And there's a number of different ways and different areas you can form these frameworks for the corporate community. Now, gamification. 
interesting thing and something we love at Autodesk, it's not about adding games to your site. It's about learning from the principles of video games, how you engage, how you get people to have repeat visitors, etc., and learn from those ideas. Now, that could be leaderboards. It could be hidden Easter eggs. It could be social content that could be shared. And there could be different elements there. But yes, we put in there a video game, uh, sorry, a game. For us, our software, we want to build that subconscious brand in people's minds that the quality of our software is so photorealistic, you can't tell the difference between a real photo and a piece of our computer-generated imagery. So we put those up on Facebook. We have those games online, and that's really helping us drive into the different areas and people having fun and sharing their results, sharing with their friends and building that sort of subconscious link up. What else do we like sharing? You know, it's not just about putting the jobs up online. It's also about putting silly things up. You know, when Brenda went away on sabbatical and came back, every element of her desk was wrapped up. Pens, papers, etc. And yeah, obviously she was quite frustrated, but uh, yeah, it took her an hour to do it. But again, it's that fun that we can go online and people think, hey, it's not just that corporate company. We also love dressing up, you know, particularly with Halloween coming up and... You know, I love the fact that some people on the back line are, are, are a bit asleep then and they suddenly woken up. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, as I said, in terms of Halloween, we love dressing up, putting that messaging out there, and having that fun. <laughs> I was worried what you're going to do then. So, that gives an idea of some of the things that we post up online. So let's show you some of those Autodesk communities to show you the differences and the vision and reality. So like everybody, we know that people love to gossip. They love to have a good chat, particularly over the garden fence and more so on social media. So yes, we have the Facebook page. What's key about that is about humanised content, fun, messaging, revealing the culture. It's not about that sort of hyperlinked list of jobs back to your corporate career site. Now, interestingly, raise your hand if you found your current job through Facebook. So, I found... <laughs> so people tell me that Facebook is the new recruiting, but with one person in an audience of 800, that's probably not true. So raise your hand if you would use Facebook to find your next job. Now, Facebook is great for certain jobs. If you're opening up a, a bar uh, in the Midlands or something like that, it's great to actually find those individuals. <laughs> But if you're looking to actually hire marketing directors in Moscow, it's obviously much more of a challenge, and that's something we recognise, that for us, Facebook, we use for the employment brand to actually engage, show that content, and take people on that particular journey. So we also recognise with this, we are not in control of what people are saying about us. We're not there monitoring it and saying, we must delete this, what should we do, etc. We recognise it's about being transparent, if somebody says something which is unfair, our community will respond, not our marketing team, PR or HR directors. It's about our community responding on our behalf. So yes, with Twitter, like everybody, we're putting out those nice 140-word characters or less tweets about what's happening in the business and engaging in that conversation. So let me ask you, raise your hands now if you would follow a corporate careers page with a list of jobs hyperlinked back to the site if you were not looking for a job. So why are we, there was zero there at that time, or perhaps there was one, um, why are we as corporates creating these pages which don't engage with a list? And I'd love to name some of the companies today, but I would severely limit my future job prospects in years to come. <laughs> so we've got to recognise that there are frustrations out there, and social media isn't easy, but we don't want to be in the position that we're just posting those hyperlinks back to the job site because it's frustrating. YouTube is brilliant. Not the corporate careers, you know, video of the managing director standing to camera saying, yes, we have a great culture. You must come and work for us. It's very exciting. ka -ching. That's not the way. It's about the content our employees can create. 
about those raw videos with a flip cam that then people look at and think, wow, that is superb. That actually feels like a company I want to be part of. And that's one of our goals to really develop that in the coming weeks and months. And of course, LinkedIn is brilliant for sourcing and recruitment. But it's also great, as we've heard, for the Talent Brand Index, the company page with information you can put up to engage. And of course, those discussion groups that we've talked about already today for crowdsourcing and other purposes. You can add those extra elements. We have a blog site, which is a mix of videos, stories, photos, but again, humanizing. But what's this really for? It's great for our communities to engage, but also it's great for people to actually learn more about the company and see what individuals are really doing. So that gives a, an idea. And yes, obviously, we focus and we look at Glassdoor and we make sure that site's up to date and we read those comments and make sure our CEO does that. I'm sure we all do that, etc. And like all of you, with those communities, we have a very focused search engine optimization strategy in place, which really helps drive traffic to those particular sites. So mobile, big passion, communities going mobile. So I'm going to be very honest here. And yes, we can all say about how fantastic mobile is. We can point to the number of handsets, the number of messages, smartphones, etc. We all know as individuals that we need to be on mobile for recruitment. But how do we do it? So I'm going to be honest and talk about my first roadblock here. I've talked about an Autodesk mobile app for many, many months. Why hasn't it been released? So we have brilliant developers. All the top bananas for me are an absolute superb development team. But for me, it's how do we actually engage people to actually download our app and want to continue focusing on that app and not delete it? People are not going to download 20 different apps and follow them. There has to be a real, real, real reason. Now, with that, we only get one chance, really. We can't go back and release something and then down the line say, oh, go back and have a look because we've improved it because most of the market won't follow. So for us, it's OK. Let's look at it. How do we engage? And this is our, our mobile app on the iPad, which will be released finally in the next month because we're happy with where, where we are. So it's not just about recruitment on the go, the job search and the pop-up job alerts when something comes up and matches your skills. There's a lot more to it than that. That's not going to get repeat visitors, especially if people are not looking for a job. And yes, it's going to have the company spin and PR or whatever else about your company, its size, etc., etc. But that's taken as a given, and generally people look at that as a one-off. Yes, we're going to have the employee profiles on there with their own pictures, answering questions in their own language, and humanizing the company. It starts to come on a little bit interesting. But for me, the key thing there is then, how do we aggregate all of our social media into one place? So people have a one-stop shop way to follow what our company and our recruitment team are doing out in the marketplace. So you can see on this particular page that you can access Facebook and comment on those particular stories. You can access Twitter and follow the feeds and join in the conversations. You can access the blog, join in those conversations whilst you're on the go. There are other areas of bloggers well known to Autodesk that we put up there that people can follow. Suddenly, people don't have to go to all these sites individually. They can go, well, I'm on the move and I can keep up to date. And now I've got a great way through this one-stop shop aggregator. But on top of that, yes, we want the fun. So we put the games in there like Fate or Photo. So now we feel we've got something that people may want to download. And our job is to keep coming up with content and ways for people to keep that app on there. And interestingly, you will see that there's companies out there like PepsiCo who have made over 100 odd hires already from their mobile app. So there is a return on investment from these apps. And it's definitely worth you looking at. Keys, you may go for a mobile optimized website. Maybe you go for an app. Maybe you go for both. But those are things that you can look at. The other challenge that we've had, and I'm going to be very honest here, comes back to our corporate career site. So our current corporate career site is corporate, it's dull, it's boring, it doesn't represent our company at all, and we all recognize, let's get rid of it. So the past few months, we've been really trying to think, OK, let's reveal that at LinkedIn and show these guys what we've come up with. But I can't reveal that today, because we're still having to work on it briefing a number of the creative geniuses in agencies in the UK, in EMEA, and in America, they kept coming up with the same basic frameworks. 
They didn't get the need to engage, to reveal behind the scenes and have fun content. And that became a real frustration for us that we've had to effectively start and design the site ourselves with the marketing team helping us. So it's a shame. I can't actually reveal that. I can't really focus on some of those fun things. But the frustration is there that we have to keep driving the creative agencies that are out there who are trying to help us with our particular content. Other things that are a challenge is our recruiters and getting sound metrics. You have the data in the ATS, but our recruiters are spending time in LinkedIn getting data. They're out in CV searches. They're out maybe on job boards. They're getting send-in CVs, etc. They're out in social media. That's a disaggregated amount of data, which effectively makes some of the metrics from the ATS, because most of those CVs and resumes probably don't make it back into the ATS, makes metrics really hard and a real challenge, and I'm sure we all find that. So we come up to the, the concluding part. So recruitment 5.0. Some of you may have seen this on ERE. Some of you may have actually uh, already seen the LinkedIn uh, area where it's uh, already being stored. So what are the, some of the things that maybe we're considering in the future? The first thing is obviously the cloud and the amount of data that is held out in that cloud. We're leaving our personal DNA footprints out in the cloud by what we do on the web, what we look at, and what we're actually engaged in and speaking to. Now, for us as companies, our hiring managers want us to obsessively know our audience. What does that mean? It's effectively trying to minimise the chances of a mishire, something our hiring managers desperately want, and we can all put values on that. We know already that sites like Amazon look at what we look at, what we buy, and then they make recommendations back to us about, you may like this CD, you may like this music. We know iTunes do that in the tunes that we listen to and the tunes that we download. So as us as recruiters, what's going to happen? The technology to actually hold your mobile phone and your iPhone up and identify a tune is out there. And we do that in the pub and think, well, that's a great tune. And then we listen to it. The technology is there that facial recognition could mean that in months and years to come is that we can hold our phone up and scan someone's face and it links back to their LinkedIn profile or Facebook. But hold, there are issues here. Obviously, privacy issues, ethical issues, and the whole debate around that. But those are the debates we're going to see, but there's obviously going to be the pressure from the hiring managers to make sure that we understand who's out in the marketplace and so we can really identify them. So what's great for candidates is that based on their trends, etc., they can effectively get tailored jobs on a plate. Effectively, they'll get this recognising their skills, experience, etc., etc. For companies, key thing there is that they're going to get those individuals who can be profiled, more understood, potentially behaviourally scanned, potentially psychologically scanned. And there's things like tweet psych out in the marketplace, which looks at your last 500 tweets, and then based on that, has a number of psychological marks based on bad language, based on negativity, based on trends. Have a look at it on Twitter, but then you can get an idea of some of the technology out there, but it may not be things that we want to look at because of the ethical and obviously the privacy issues. So what else are we going to be looking at apart from these elements of the scanning and that? As the war for talent really hots up, as the individuals become much more scarce, Candidate cloning. What does this mean? Effectively, we're trying to predict and create those candidates who can come into our businesses, particularly graduates, and hit the ground running straight away. Companies creating their own universities, their own academies, their own technology colleges, their own training courses, etc., and really then starting to make sure they have the right skills, be it people management, be it team skills, and all the soft skills which are generally not taught at university, as we know as we invest in those grads as they come in. We could talk about the death of the ATS. What's its merit? Most of the data is outside of the ATS. Do we need an ATS? Do we use it just for processing? Or can we use things like talent pipeline to really develop the pipelining and then just use back-end technology to do all the basic processing? Questions that we need to really look at. And employment brand messaging. What's key here is we've said already that we're all saying we're unique, we're a great company to work for, so how do we then start to get in there and really focus on making a difference? 
Things like augmented reality are already being used. Not virtual reality, which is sort of medium in the virtual world and computer. It's about using the technology in the real world to give an insight, an experience, and a real passion into your company. And if you look at 5.0, there's some ideas of how that can be used. But also, we need to be disruptive in terms of the marketing that we actually have to differentiate ourselves in the marketplace. <laughs> So as it comes back to, we like to try and do things a little different and obviously disrupt what the normal presentation would be about. So let's bring this to a, a close. Um, that's given you some ideas and hopefully some things to look at. And what are we going to be in the future as recruiters? Given that we have the cloud, given we've got crowdsourcing, given we've got communities, given that we can engage in those communities, what will be the role of a recruiter? Could hiring managers do, do it themselves? But that's a conversation for the pub tonight. As we round off, it's been a brilliant conference. So what are the key things I want you guys to take away from the end of this? So we want three things. Apart from London being the party city capital of the world, as I look over to Steve Cadden and smile. So the key things are, firstly, nurture your employment brand. Make sure it's built inside out and it's a true reflection of the business. Engage in them, build those communities, be they social media or communities elsewhere. And then lastly, let's make sure we get out there and really innovate and change what we're doing and really drive our profession. Because as we said, what we do, what we do as recruiters, we can make or break a company. If we hire mediocre talent, our business is going down the pan. If we can hire the best people, it's going to hit the bottom line. We can truly make or break it. So let's celebrate what we do. And if you can all just stand up and to the person next to you, high five and celebrate what we as recruiters do, that will be as a great way to finish. Please stand up and high five the person next to you. So let's innovate. Let's really drive forward. Let's head in one direction and celebrate recruitment. Thank you very much. Thank you.